Hi everyone, my name is Emily. This is Serverless Camp Week 4 Step 1 by BitProject. And in this video, we'll be going over basic HTML and how to connect um, our serverless functions with a more user-friendly UI. So uh, if you might remember, we have made a bunny image Azure function. We've made a two cats Azure function. And now we're gonna connect it together um, because um, usually users aren't going to want to make post requests through Postman every time to interact with um, something you code, an API. And through this week, we're going to learn how to make user-friendly UIs where they can interact with your API. All right, so let's get started. Um, in this task list, the first thing we want to do is create a bunny image front-end branch. So let's go over to the Visual Studio um, application, and I'm just going to type in git checkout hd bunny image front end. Okay, so now that I'm on the new branch, um, we're going to want to install Live Server. Now, if you're wondering what Live Server is, if you go click on applications or extensions, whatever you want to call it, uh, go ahead and search up Live Server. Um, should be the first thing that pops up. I already have it installed, so if you don't, go ahead and click install. Basically what this does is that it allows you to preview your HTML pages as you code them, and it's really helpful because it updates. You don't have to continually click refresh. Um, you can test it as you code. And that's exactly what we're gonna be using to test our um, cute little application for this week. All right, um, a third optional step is to learn HTML. Um, that's obviously optional if you want a deeper understanding or if you don't completely understand it from this particular video, you can go ahead and um, use that. All right, now the fourth step, uh, fourth step is a little bit ambiguous. Um, it just says to listen for the form to be submitted and call a function. So let's break this step down. If you Let's skip down here, um, writing the event handler function. Um, basically what an event handler is, is basically what the title, like name is, um, it handles events. So every time we click something on the HTML page, it's going to have an event. We're going to capture the event and we're going to do something about it. Because if you didn't have an event handler, nothing would happen. It, your, your page wouldn't do anything. So let's um, take a look here. So we're going to go back to our Visual Studio Code. And the first thing we're going to do um, is Click on this bunny image folder. You should see an HTML file already created for you. It has everything you need. Um, and what we're going to do first is create an index.js file. Now this is the JavaScript file. Um, and it's going to contain the code that's going to control what's going to happen um, on the HTML page and what's going to be displayed to users. So let me go back here. And the first thing we're going to do is create a variable using the ID of the HTML form. I'm gonna copy paste this code and I'm gonna show you what it does. So if you look back on HTML, you'll see that there's a form with the ID of bun form. And these attributes on the HTML are very important because they identify what HTML object you're gonna be searching for. Like for example, for this one, we want the bunny, the bun form. Um, so we called the bun form using the, bun, um, the get element by ID method. And by doing so, we can um, get the attributes of it. We can see what's submitted in the form. We can see everything that's um, in the form and we can interact with it. So now that we have um, a reference to this form, let's go back here and we're gonna add an event listener. Let's talk a bit more in depth about what an event listener is and what the code is for. So as you can see here, we're adding an event listener to the bun form, which we just referenced over here. Um, we're going to be listening for an event called submit. So every time someone submits the form, we're going to want to capture that event and do something about it. Now you see this first line of code in the event listener. It says uh, const username equals document.get element by ID username.value. Now what's important about this one is notice that there's this little dot value thing here. That's saying that we want to get the value of the text box. And let's go ahead. I think this is a good point in time to take a look at what our HTML page actually looks like. So if you want to click on go live, um, you should have had this if you have your live server and it'll open a web page for you. 
So go ahead and go to the web page. All right, so now this is what your HTML actually looks like. Um, if you see here, there's a text box for you to put a code in. Um, there's a submit button for to submit the form, the bun form that we just put in our code. And if we go back to the JS file, this line is getting the text from the text box that the user is gonna type in. All right, so now we have that straight. Let's go back here. Um, we want to now prevent the website from reloading. So I want to show what happens if you don't have an event dot prevent default line of code. So if you just submit something, the page is going to refresh. And that means it would also clear whatever output we're trying to put um, for the user. So we don't want that to happen. So if you add this piece of code right um, for in front of the after the event listener call, this will prevent the page from reloading, which is a very important step. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is add this line of code and I'll talk a bit about what it does. Just like how we reference the bun form using this ID, we're gonna reference the um, output using the output ID. And this is where we're gonna display the output to the user where we're gonna add their code with an appended heart. So now that we have a reference to that, um, we want to set the text content of that output box to something. So then the user can see an output. So if you see here, username, once again, this is the um, value of whatever the user typed in. Um, and then we're just appending this little heart emoji to it. So let's go back and Let's take a look at what else we need to do. All right, so this is about what the um, ending code should look like, what we have right now. But there's one important step that um, we really need to do in order to connect the HTML and JavaScript together. So right now, um, these two files are standalone. There's no way they can communicate with each other. We haven't told HTML what JavaScript code to use, and obviously the JavaScript code is not going to know that it's connected to the HTML. So there's one simple line that we're going to need to add to our HTML to solve this. So create and reference. So click on this drop down. It says, how do I reference it? It's very simple. This line of HTML will help you do that. All this is doing is it's saying that the HTML code should use this JavaScript um, and it should be referenced to run the website's functions. So basically, if you think about it like this, it's a bridge between these two files. All right, let's go test our application to see if it works. So I have it over here and I'm gonna go ahead and type in snickerdoodle. I'm gonna click submit and look at that. We have an output of snickerdoodle heart. Um, you can add, try another test case and open my name. Submit and it works. So as you can see here, this is a very basic example of how to make a basic web page. Um, it hasn't connected any APIs yet. We're gonna do that in the next few steps. Let's go back here. So just a quick run through about what we actually did. Um, if you go back to the JavaScript file, basically first we created a reference to the form and then we added an event listener. If the user submits the form and you can see this, this is actually the button we were clicking on. If the user submits the form, um, don't, reload, don't reload the page. And then we want to get whatever the user typed into username. Um, we want to get a reference to the output where we want to display this information. And then we want to lastly set the output, um, the text content of the output uh, equal to whatever the user's input was plus the heart. Okay, so now that you have this completed app, let's go back here and see what we have to do. So we've done that, we wrote a function, okay. And let's go ahead and commit our code. Okay, so now we're just gonna commit everything. So let's go ahead, get add. Get commit add um, appended heart to user output, um, and then we're gonna push to this branch. All right, so now we can probably create a pull request. So 
let's see here, compare to pull request, and make sure to add a descriptive title. So I'm just going to call it before step one, pen heart. What changes that I made? I added an index.js file and um, coded so that user output would have a heart appended to it. I do not need this. All right, let's go ahead and create a pull request. So let's go back here, make sure we don't um, have any left over, and we're just gonna wait for the bot to check our code. So I'll see you when that's finished. So if all went well, you should have seen that the um, code passed the test. You can see here Cypress clicked around your page like a user would, and they figured out that your code works. So awesome. Now you can go ahead and, um, yep, yeah, we can go ahead and merge. The bot said all good. All right, and that's it for this step. Thank you so much. Join us for the next video.